That's a bit of a switch for the uh, for the journal over the last couple of years. They've been very hawkish on the Fed, and and today today's editorial was important. They basically said, "Look, enough is enough." Uh, the the Fed is, uh, I think, and I think the the Wall Street Journal said this. The Fed is actually causing. Uh, may be causing the very recession that these rate hikes are supposed to help us get out of if we get into it. So I think there's a shift in opinion now on the Fed. Uh, by the way, I said this, what was it, about 10 days ago on your show. The Fed is way too tight. Uh, it is, uh, we have a deflationary environment. Look at, and even since I said that, uh, commodities keep falling. And in my yes. opinion, that's the Oil. best indication. Right. So, Steve, it, it's not inconsistent, though, uh, to say that they should, they should have been hawkish two years ago when, when yeah. it was the right time. Right. And by then, you know, Leesman, you know, doesn't the water get yeah. heavy? Just take it. Just hold on for one second. You're going to break. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, 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 your your back is like over. Oh, but anyway, uh, it could have been that they stayed too long at the zero think, party, and now you can't raise. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't buy that. I think the big mistake was that what the Fed did three months ago. Not just the 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 rate increase. But the but the signal that they were going to keep right. raising and raising and raising and raising, and I think that just sucked the, the oxygen. Speech. Yeah, with uh, with uh, Judy Woodruff, who's still. Well, no, it was the conversation. Well, it was the interview with Judy Woodruff, and then the that sort of peel back of it afterwards. And the, the problem here, guys, is, is this: that the Fed believes that growth causes inflation. The Fed was high, afraid of right. higher wages, and the, look, the whole reason we put in place our deregulation policies, our tax cut, uh, all of our pro energy policies, was to get wages up. And the question I would, I, I know. Steve, Steve Leesman is shaking his head right yeah, now. But he Steve, Steve, here's the he thing. Was. You know, how are we going to get higher wages for workers, which is what I think we all want, if every time we get a higher wage increase, the Fed tries to pull it back? Um, I, I agree with you, and I agree with the Fed letting it run. But Steve, Mm -hmm. You are a huge advocate of these tax cuts. Mm -hmm. I am also a supporter of the tax cuts. Okay. How, how do you posit that these tax cuts will work, will raise potential growth, and yet still support a 0% real funds rate? So in your world, <clears throat> the cost of money should be zero on an overnight basis. That you're not, you're not unleashing. You cannot believe, Steve, you're going to unleash this huge capital spending boom mm -hmm. And the cost of capital remains zero. What happened to capitalism? Well, look, <laughs> here's, here's the problem. I, I actually don't even think the right mechanism for the Fed has to get more dollar liquidity into the market. I mean, all over the world, 3 people, want, trillion, people, Steve Moore. people want dollars. I mean, as, as a consequence of our pro-growth tax cuts, our deregulation policies, <laughs> America is a great place to invest in. We're growing faster than everybody else. People want dollars, and the Fed isn't providing it. Now, I'm not so sure that lowering uh, the Fed fund rate to zero is the right way to do that. But I'm just saying, when I see those commodities that have fallen by 10 to 15 percent since the last Fed move, I'm, I'm Steve, I'm calling that deflation, not inflation. I think they're, they're uh, following a boogeyman there. <laughs> If so that, some, that's my view. And, and we, you know, when you talk oil at 49, it's, oh, that's just a supply. No one ever wants no, to. No, no, but look, it's not just oil, though. Look at I all know. the commodities they're down. Well, now, transports. Look, I the mean, other... there's a lot of weird stuff happening. You think we're slowing down, Steve? Do you think that the, I mean, this, this almost looks yeah, like the, 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 the negative of this being a Keynesian sugar high from no, no, the no, tax no, no, cut no, no. rather than a permanent no sugar tip. high that, there's no sugar what, high but that's what people that, that hoped it was a sugar high are, are now it's coming back and saying hope it's, but, a sugar high. My, it's a reality of the but, situation uh, look, look deep into your real feelings Andrew. Let, no, no, let, no. let me let me make a couple points here first of all the the reason the economy yes. is slowing down is because the fed look is way too tight now the other thing and what that's about going china on, now, China that's the, that's the other no, point. No, no, of course. Really. That's the second point. Is that the, and by the way, read my piece in the Hill today where I'm arguing that I think the, that, that investors are way too pessimistic. And that's why I followed that poll you were just showing. Investors are just too pessimistic about a positive outcome here in this trade war. This is a trade war that everybody knew was coming. We have to do it at some point. I, I would argue do it now. I mean, we are in an abusive relationship with China. They get worse and worse and worse every day. We saw what happened. With the, with the espionage that happened last week, I believe that there's a very high, and by the way, I saw the president last week, and we chatted about this, and he believes, too, that there's going to there's gonna get a call, he's going to get a call from President Xi sometime in the next two months saying, call off the dogs, we can't live with these tariffs. Stephen, if you, if you knew all of this was going to happen a year and a half ago, would have you advocated for the tax cuts that you did? 
You know, the tax cuts have been a gigantic success. I mean, look at the, the, the uh, investment well, by the businesses, question. the high employment. I mean, in what way haven't they? In fact, the, the I, I CEO. Don't I don't know. That's what I'd like to know. Yeah. dollars of debt we're going to go into because they're not going to pay no, no, for themselves. No, no, no. The CBO, uh, this is a Larry Kudlow. I mean, you guys aren't listening to Larry. And Larry's exactly right about this. If you look at what, how they have revised their 10-year forecast just since we passed the tax cut, they've revised upward over 10 years their GDP estimate by $6 trillion. The, fe the federal government's going to get a trillion out of that. We've already paid for two-thirds of the so cost. So 3% real, Steve, 2% inflation, 5% nominal, and you're saying the Fed at two and a quarter is way too tight. Steve. I want to know what happened to the hard money, <laughs> conservative hawks I used to know on the editorial page of the Wall Street Steve, Journal. Steve, I respect your opinion. But it's your opinion. Of, it's no, not I know. No, but let, I want to ask you a question because I've done this show twice now in the last couple of weeks, and none of you have been able to answer the question, uh, why is it that, the, that uh, commodity prices are falling if we're worried about inflation. I just don't get that. We're in a deflationary environment. And the Fed, in my opinion, Steve, would be insane, insane to be raising rates in this kind of environment right now. I, I would say I respect the notion of Larry Kudlow and yourself <laughs> that commodity prices are a leading policy indicator, but I do not embrace it. <laughs> All right. All right. Can I uh, ask one? I, by the way, I'm, I'm more bullish today. I mean, you look at the P.E. ratio. If you're I bullish, mean, my God. I'm so bullish on the stock market. I mean, my God, the, the P.E. ratios are good. The economy is strong. Construction is good. Manufacturing is good. Investment is good. Industrial production is good. Uh, the, this is the most amazing uh, divergence of the stock market versus the real economy I've seen in 20 years. Unfortunately, we don't know. We never know what's, what's ailing it well, until, that's true. until I we mean, know. No, I can't predict the future, but it, it doesn't look... I mean, look, we just got the GDP, latest GDP forecast for the fourth quarter. We're at a pace of about 3%. Where's the slowdown? Yeah. It could be a lot of things. It could be the rise of the machines. We may all be, super, you know, they may kill us. Uh, yeah. They may, they may not. We don't know if they like us or need us or anything. Uh, hey, go it's ahead. Uh, Walter Isaacson, Steve. I was wondering if I could change the subject just slightly, <laughs> sure. which is, what do you think the possibilities are for a shutdown at the end of the week? You've just talked to Trump. And what effect would that have? First of all, no, zero effect. It's, it's the biggest non-event of our time. I mean, it doesn't matter if the government shuts down dur during a holiday weekend. And by the way, you know, it, it affects more than 30 percent of the government workers. So it's, it's, it's going to have zero effect on the economy. But uh, I, and look, I don't, I, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to happen. And, and, and I, it's impossible to predict because it's all up to Donald Trump. It's all in his you know, decision, and you never quite know what Donald Trump is going to do. But it, it's a not event. I don't think investors should be worried one way or the other right. about it. It's going to, it'll last, if there is a shutdown, it'll last 48 hours during a weekend. So no, don't, don't be nervous about this.